Welcome back to Not Your Average Joe. <clears throat> Welcome back to Not Your Average Joe, the podcast that'll make anyone a little less average. I'm your host, Joe Franco, and y'all are not ready for today's episode. So I know I say this every time. This might actually be my favorite episode. And the reason why is because I'm speaking to a man who does everything. He's a professional football, aka soccer player, if you're listening from the states he is a polyglot the man speaks nine languages he's a content creator he hosts shows online like this guy is an overall badass who's lived a global life for the last 20 years and we talk about everything from achieving goals to mentality how to shift your mindset to achieve those goals we talk about journaling and the power of writing things down to actually move towards that life you've always wanted and deserve to live we talk about tips on how to learn languages obviously the guest on the show today his name is will john he goes by golu remy on social media you're gonna fall in love with this guy really there are so many book recommendations and takeaways i highlighted a few but you're gonna want to take notes for this one by the way i just came back from crete i spent spent 12-ish days there and I got super sick, it wasn't COVID, but if you're sick right now, I'm wishing you a speedy recovery. It's like no fun being sick. So let's just take a moment of appreciation for something that has no problems in your body right now. Like if your throat is not sore, just take a minute and appreciate that not sore throat. Your legs are feeling good. Take a minute to appreciate your legs that don't feel bad. This is the exercise that I'm doing now because when I was down, it was not good. So I'm excited to come back. I know we missed last week because I was like really not doing well and I sounded like a chain smoker but i um, very excited to be back with y'all and she's gonna go into full beast mode I'm back in London and I'm trying to apply for my visa so all good things all busy things and this episode actually helped me because it's one of those that helps you streamline what you want and think about the goals in a clear cut way so you can finally start seeing the path forward Kill the intro, sis. You know she's not your average show, not your average show. She's not your average show. How's it going, my man? I'm so excited. We finally got to chat. It took some I time, know. but here we are. I know. See, that's this is this is you persevere, people. Okay, do not give up. No matter your dream, how small or how big, that's the theme. I want everybody walking away from this. I want everybody to be just destroying, devouring their dreams by the end of this podcast. All right. That's hilarious. I love how we started at the end. Like usually I save the major, not your average joke takeaway for the very end. But hey, I like this. We're going to work a little backwards. Will John, I would love for you to introduce yourself. You, like me, do many things like what we said on your podcast. So it's hard Mm -hmm. to pinpoint how to even define you so just describe what you do and who you are and all the good things that that you've accomplished gosh uh i have not accomplished nearly everything that i've set out to do which is a good thing uh because uh you know i'm i stay hungry but i like she said i am i am a pretty multifaceted human being i am a professional soccer player uh i've played in a number of countries uh so i started in the u.s i'm from kansas city Started out playing in the MLS for Chicago Fire and Sporting Kansas City before moving over to Europe, uh, where I've more or less played forever uh, now. And I just finished the season in Zagreb, Croatia. And so, yeah, along with that, I learned a whole bunch of other languages. Um, So I I speak nine languages. uh, And um, we started a YouTube channel that just kind of blew up on soccer side, and then we just started the language side, and we also run a business that consults and, and does all, all sorts of other things for the in the football world, in the language world, in the education world. We have two podcasts, of which, of course, you will be on. And uh, yeah, so I, I keep myself busy, and that's just more or less the business professional side. When, when I'm not doing all of that stuff, you can find me meditating, reading like crazy, uh, doing yoga, you know, and just trying to keep that balance between that, that kind of spiritual feeling, uh, you know, uh, to keep your sanity and to keep you pushing and uh, then doing all the, the business stuff. So that's me, more or less. <laughs> There's so many questions that I have specifically about time management and uh, balance, which we'll get to. But I want to backtrack a little bit. Did you come from a family or a household where people were 
multilingual overachievers like what was the incubation period of little will <laughs> and and everything he became <laughs> no so i mean my 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 dad's from nigeria he grew up speaking english and yoruba of which i do not speak yoruba yet and my mom was from chicago she passed away just a couple years ago now uh unfortunately but she did not speak any other languages uh she it is her it is thanks to her though that i speak spanish she got me started it's thanks to her that i speak all the languages to be perfectly honest because once you learn how you can do this you know you're you're not afraid if you're just learning as an adult it's much harder so she basically put me in little spanish classes after school i would come home and want to watch whatever i wanted to watch she had me watching comprehensible input in which is just uh stuff geared towards helping kids learn spanish and that's what I watched when I came home from school. And so before I knew it, by the time I was 12 or 13, I could speak Spanish. And um, that was amazing. So, yeah, my time management, just to even maybe circumvent or catch you on a question you're going to come, it's very easy. Because uh, at this point, number one, I have a team of amazing people who help make sure that I'm focused on the things that I need to focus on. Number two, I have some things that I think, you know, you learn things from very successful people. Uh, and I've been blessed enough to be a part of different committees and different things where I've just been talking to these people, whether they're very successful. We're talking, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in their companies or managing billions of dollars, you know, and, and getting to ask these people, how do you do what you do? Because it, it, what you do seems impossible. And uh, one of the things that I've learned is that the, you have to have certain, not just times, but certain things that are non-negotiable. Your non-negotiables have to, you have to choose them first off because most people will not take the time to decide what do I really want to have in my life and keep. And then when you're structuring out your daily schedule, these non-negotiables are non-negotiable. My meditation, my training time, my reading time is non-negotiable. You couldn't move me from that. You will never be able to move me from that. If I don't have, you know, if I have to get up early to take a flight, then I'll get up an hour earlier and make sure I do it. It's non-negotiable. And so uh, having that little space that's carved out for the things that are non-negotiable allows you a whole bunch of freedom. Let's get into these not your average Joe takeaways. Not your average Joe takeaway number one. And not average Joe carves out their non-negotiables. This is a reoccurring tip in the episodes because it's obviously common in high performers that they carve out the things that make them themselves. And I think the key to being not average is valuing yourself enough to make time to do those things that make you you and that in turn give you energy to keep doing everything for everyone else. So don't quiet that voice inside of your head that says, man, I really want to read. Man, I really want to write. Man, I really want to draw. Man, I really want to meditate. Do those things. Because odds are, if you don't act on that voice, it's just going to keep nagging you. It's not going to go away. So you might as well do something about it. Because if you do the things you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do them, then you can do whatever you want. Then people are like, oh, I don't want to be so strict and have this rigid schedule. It's like, no, you don't. I have, when I have free time, I don't know what I'm going to do in the free time. If I'm going to go with my friends to hang out with this, I don't, whatever. You know, you can have that time where you want it to be free and random. I don't know about you. I don't know how you do all the things that you do. Miss TV host, polyglot, YouTube superstar, running the business over here, got a podcast over here. She's doing everything. She's asking me about time management. I need to be asking you how you do it. Honestly, well, I just love these conversations because I feel like we, it's not so often that we get to get legitimately detailed about a day-to-day -day, you know, list of habits. Like when I think about somebody like you, we just met, but from the bat, I was like, wow, this guy, this is somebody I want to be friends with because, yes, you're a polyglot, that language connection, we already see things similarly, even if we don't speak any of the same languages, which we do have a little bit of overlap. But the, the habit and the kind of like gumption that you need to have to learn a bunch of languages is already something to admire. But, but what I loved about kind of digging into your story was that it's not just in language it connects to everything else you do it's with your fitness life as well like I'm always working out because that to me is a non-negotiable I don't have a brand in fitness but that's been a piece of my life since I was like 15 16 and similar to you like I didn't come from a family from my side it wasn't really I didn't come from a family where people were uh, fit necessarily or like where fitness was a thing I didn't see my my 
mom, you know, running or my siblings even doing sports or anything like that. But it just became a thing that I did. And the same thing goes for my business side. It's like, I guess what I'm trying to say is that you, similar to me, we have the same kind of muscle, which it doesn't matter if you're playing sports or you're learning languages or you're running businesses. It's the muscle of persistence. So can you talk about the challenges along the way like let's let's go into your soccer football career what did that look like because I'm sure that the life of a professional athlete like to get to the pro level it's not all peaches and cream <laughs> by no means by no means even you know it's funny and I think I, I I'm not sure where if it was just a, another podcast or, or a video we were discussing the fact that even your top level t- take your less than 1% player, the players you know, you know about Messi and Ronaldo and, you know, people know certain names in football. Well, apart from those two guys, pretty much everybody else has to market themselves. You have to try and do all this. So everybody is still in the same boat, whether you're, you're in that low range or, or that, that, that upper, upper high range. And so what you will learn very early on and what I learned very early on is no is something that you will get all the time. And I know it's a cliche, and I'm sure people have talked about this and other things, but the amount of no's you get in professional sports is so phenomenal that you do eventually, if you persist, you will become numb to it. And you'll realize that no isn't no for, you know, forever. Like the coach will say, you're not good, I don't want you. It's hardly a no for now. Like this one no here just means not here. Okay, it means over here. It's just it's like a, it's like something that <laughs> clarifies your options for you. And no is also it's a great thing. And so it, it's it's weird to say this, but I'll talk to agents and coaches that'll be like, you know, uh, no chance. You are, you're not playing in this league, or you're not playing over here, and you're not over here, and and you just persist until you find that person, that guy, and then you boom and you go. And one of the things that I think is is really important for people that I've learned from having this professional athlete life is that you have to have some critical thinking skills. And that is something that I've talked about a whole lot that I think in our society is waning. The ability to think deeply on a subject, think critically on a subject, and especially self-reflect. You know, uh, that doesn't mean I don't take on the things from people outside. All these people said, you're not attractive or you're not good at the sport. And, you know, we live in a society now where you can, if you want an opinion on yourself, everybody has one. Everybody, you know, has, has something on it. What's most important is how you can delineate who you are, what you really believe about yourself, and whether or not you're doing the best in what you're doing. That's everything that I've, I've learned. How to figure out, am I doing the best for myself? And am I making the same mistakes over and over again? We all have our habits. We all have our blind spots. And if you don't take your consciousness and throw that, your aim, your the only power that you truly have is really your power of thought, which is the, where you direct your attention. If you don't direct your attention towards yourself, then you really don't know yourself. And I mean hard and be honest with yourself. That's part of the things that, that will change you. And if you have people also too that aren't just, you know, uh, you suck and you this, that can actually help you look at yourself. I mean, the amount of things that you can change and, and grow, I mean, is just unbelievable. I mean, I don't know how, how you do it and how you constantly improve. Uh, because as someone who has to work out for his job, I'm amazed at people that can work out. You don't have a game at the weekend. How are you motivating yourself? Like, how does this, how did you make that habit? Is, you know, like what, well, what is driving I mean, you to do that? That's this I mean, we could go so many places with this conversation i'm like okay let's talk about that and this and that and this. uh well i mean the same question goes for you with languages or for your businesses and your two podcasts right like sometimes i i actually think about this often because i don't have to work out i don't have to learn languages i literally don't have to do whatever i don't want to do because i've built a career where like financially my costs are low I bought my house in cash all I need if I literally didn't want to do anything anymore I could get a job at the bakery down the street and be fine and that's a beautiful thing but yet I find myself waking up early I find myself on the computer every day you know thinking of creative concepts thinking of businesses to grow after the entire day six to eight to ten hours on the computer I'm calling friends to keep those relationships alive I'm getting 
my body dressed and I'm going to my basement where I'm on my treadmill and, and then I'm like <laughs> listening to some audio lesson in Greek, not because I'm even going to Greece anytime soon, but just because I like it. And some days I don't want to do any of it. I literally do not want to do any of it will. And I started asking myself, I'm like, damn, especially when I'm home. So I live in the middle of the woods in Connecticut. It was a pandemic purchase. Awesome. So I don't have people around me that can motivate me. You know, when you're in a city and you have friends and somebody's like, oh, let's go out. Let's go on a hike. Let's do this. That depending on what kind of friends you have. I used to have that life when I lived in L.A. I used to have motivated friends. We'd go work out together. And ever since I came here, the only source of motivation and energy has to come from inside of me. And the main thing that gets me dressed and downstairs and running and I'm like you know what just do it for five minutes just do it for 10 minutes and then I always end up doing at least 30 minutes and feel great after but it's just the idea that I'm I'm like basically building a better foundation for my future self and also enjoying the process as I'm doing it right like all of these things that we do are building blocks your body is fit that's because you did a series of small habits you're fluent in nine languages because you've done a series of small habits. And so it's like, even when I don't want to do something, I just kind of remind myself, it takes a page to fill a book. Not your average Joe, takeaway number two, the not average Joe understands the power of daily practice. Meditation is a practice, yoga is a practice, journaling is a practice, learning languages is a practice, fitness is a practice, financial literacy is a practice. And the thing about practice is doing it repeatedly. It's thinking about it often. You know that the beauty is in the compounding effect of doing that thing over and over again. It's not in the like get rich quick schemes. It's the triumph, it's the grit. Call me a masochist, but it's a little bit of the pain that it takes to get you to that point where you've gone from A to B and you've seen a journey transform you. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight and if I say no today, then it'll just amount in weeks and months and years of no. And that's gonna amount in a ball of like all of these shoulda, coulda, wouldas, but I didn't simply because I didn't want to. So that's, I guess, my big picture thinking about it. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the thing that you talked about, that those small steps and most people have probably heard of the book uh, Atomic Habits, right? Uh, James Clear. I, uh, I don't know. If I you, haven't you know read it yet. You haven't I read it. I need to read it. No. You'll enjoy it. You, you you have this. It's always good because that's the thing is like you have that mentality already. But as anybody knows that you learn something, you have to reinforce your beliefs and your thoughts every day. It's something that, for me, in order to do what I do and. I'm a huge reader, uh, so that's for me. I mean, obviously, I listen to podcasts and do stuff like this, but the thing is, is that in order for me to do what I do, I've also stacked a lot of my things on top of the uh, another. So, for instance, when I go to training, uh, there's a guy that speaks French, only French. I got to speak with him in French. I'm the translator for him at training. You know, he doesn't speak Croatian, which, by the way, trainings are also in Croatian, <laughs> right? So I'm already, I'm already there. Every, that's every day. Every day is, is like that. Then there's another guy that speaks Italian. So we just decided, well, great, we're just going to speak Italian to, together. And so what I do is when I'm also reading, like I said, and I'll read books that range from everywhere from metaphysics to philosophy to nonfiction, all these things, and some fiction, I'll read in another language. Um, I've basically banished myself from watching anything on Netflix or anything that, in English. It's gone. My, It's just, I can't do it. I can't miss that valuable opportunity to, to do to do so obviously when you're with friends and things like this and it changes but i always usually convince people i'm like all right we can watch it in english can i get some subtitles let me get some subtitles in another, another language you guys just to ignore those subtitles i know you don't understand they're for me now your average joe takeaway number three i need to put a bookmark in this one because this is one of my favorite language learning tips or even habit forming tips habit stacking that's when you do two things at once. Two things that you would have done anyways, but you just mash them together. You gotta get a little creative with this, but if you follow me on Instagram, at Joe underscore Franco, you know that's what I'm doing when I am running on the treadmill and learning a language, or when I am reading a book in a different language, or when I'm binging a juicy show, but it's in a different language. These are all examples of habit stacking, and I just named three ways, but Will is talking about how his job is in different languages. So it's like, 
How can you design your life in this way where by default you're speaking different languages or learning them and so it's not so much of an extra chore, it's just a part of your life. And this applies to things bigger than just learning languages, right? Like this applies to being financially literate. If you wanna be more financially literate, you can go and apply for a job in the finance sector so you can learn. If you wanna learn about travel or eventually travel the world, apply for a job in a travel kind of company. That's what I did out of college. There are ways to be strategic so that you maximize your time, especially if you have a million goals like both Will and I have. And I use it as an opportunity. Um, you know, and we have an interesting thing in society where a workaholic is somebody who we like to see, we like to say, uh, is somebody who's just going without and ignoring, you know, all this stuff. I would actually consider myself a workaholic. The only difference is that, yes, I have balance within, within my life because I'm doing more, I'm doing different, different things. So I need some rest time when you play a game, the next day is off. I, I let my brain rest too you know, stuff like, stuff like this. But I'm a workaholic in the sense that I've been lucky enough to create a life where work is play. Everything that I choose to do, actually, so I, I, I go to training. After training, I might film a video with my friends. That's for soccer. I'm also a web TV host. So I'm a host of a, another, on another channel uh, called Unisport that's got about, you know, 4 million subscribers. You can see me there every week. And so, you know, after that, I might, you know, study a few languages, might be with, with some other people, you know, stuff, stuff like this, just uh, talking or talking to another polyglot, somebody that speaks a whole bunch of languages. That's 30 minutes, uh, an hour, something like this. Most of my day is filled pursuing all of my dreams, and I don't consider it work. It's just so happened that I do earn from all of the things that I love. That's it. I know that you mentioned uh, when we spoke earlier that when you couldn't find, when you can't find your dream job, you have to create it. So... Uh, I'll swing it even back to you just to, just to say, uh, how is that going? What is that thing for you? How do you continually push to make sure that you're creating this dream life? Because you can get, number one, stuck in a rut. Number two, you can feel like you don't want to do it anymore. And like, what do you do then? So how, how is that journey kind of going for you? You're so great. And this is how you know you're a host and you're you're just a thinker. Ah. Will, I'm so glad I met you. And it's funny because we were talking about <laughs> it's, this. On it's thanks to you. Well, it was your TikTok videos and you were like, wow, it's so dope okay. that you found me for languages because you have been in this world of soccer football for so long and now you're shifting into more of like the meditation space and the mindfulness and the languages. So this reflects how I've seen my journey and this quote unquote like building of a dream life. I don't think there is one dream life, at least not in my lifetime. What I've seen is I've had phases of what that looks like for me and mainly because I can only dream of what I can imagine and the more I learn and the more people I meet, the more I experience, the bigger my dreams get, right? So it's like I don't know what I don't know yet. So my dreams now are plot points of things that I can imagine for myself and what's cool is that that dream will only get bigger if I look at what's happened in my past. So I don't know, like I've always written things down and I'm curious if you've written down the things that you've accomplished. I'm sure you have. Have you? <laughs> yeah. So I have an interesting relationship with writing things down. Early on, I wrote nothing down. Uh, and the main reason that I wrote nothing down, and when I say early on, in, um, teens and early 20s, was because I only had one goal, which my one goal, I guess I should back up because it's a fairly interesting story. Very few people in life, I've noticed now, have know exactly what they want and at an early age uh you know i have friends that are you know much older than me still don't know what they want to do in life they're still searching you know and i realized that i'm blessed at that i was 15 i was home from school i don't have any idea why i was at home because it was like it, it was early and I just the Champions League final was on. I saw this guy score a goal and he took off on a celebration. And it was the first time I got the chills. Like I just it was like an out of body, crazy experience. You know, just I couldn't believe what I was seeing. For some reason, I knew. Boom. So at 15, 15, 15, I knew I, I had to be a professional soccer player. I, this is my life. And so from I had been good before that, you know, it's not like it, it was it came out of nowhere. But it was then that I had all that focus. And because I had all that focus, I really didn't feel like I needed to write anything down because what's my day-to-day? -day? Become a, do this, become this professional soccer player, do this. So uh, by 19, I went pro. So it was only four years after, uh, you know, maybe actually three and a half years, to, to be honest. I left college early 
and I went pro. And at the time, there were only like maybe 12, 13 guys in the entire country that were leaving to go pro. So it was, it was pretty unique. Uh, but that's what focus can, can, can do for you, right? So now fast forward to my next goal being to, I wanted to play in Europe. I achieved that maybe four years after, you know? And so I've been in Europe ever since with a stint. I also played in Morocco, which is tons of fun, uh, uh as well. But, uh, I only had to start writing things down. I, I put it off. I, because I didn't have a whole lot of goals. Once you start to have a few goals and things and distractions and things that can get in your way and life and all this stuff, if you're not writing it down, then you're not focused. And it's just a, a fact of life, you guys. You just got to admit to yourself, if you can't put it down in clear, precise, succinct words, I want to have this or I am this type of person. I've changed my identity. I am now a, you know, soccer player. I am now, I whatever, lose weight, whatever it is you want to do, bulk up. If that's not written down, you're not going for it. Uh, you haven't clarified it in your mind. It has to be there because it's a choice you make every day. It's a, you have to make that choice every day. You have to truly be the master of your world and uh, the, the queen or king of your existence. Go into nothing blind and really own it. I think that's a, something that people feel like there's this loss of, of power. You don't have to give up that power. You should take that power in all your decisions. Own your life. Be responsible for every single thing that you do. And when you mess up, you mess up. That's fine. You mess, you mess that one up. You get back on. You go. The victory will be your It'll be for you. And so I don't know if that's a mentality that you've kind of picked up or how you've done it or how you reinforce, you know, but like I, I know you write in your journal for all sorts of things, but what are you writing specifically that keeps you that keeps you going? Man, I was supposed to be interviewing you. This is a very I, well balanced conversation. <laughs> I'm curious. That's just the thing. You know, I'm learning. So actually, it started when I was younger. I was a very quiet kid. I've been asking my mom all week, like, so how was I? She's like, you didn't like anyone, and you were very shy and very quiet, and you were very smart. But I remember those days, it was like, you know, when I was five, six, youngest of three big personalities in the house. So I started writing when I was really young, partially because I felt like no matter what I said, no one would take me seriously. And at school, like, it sounds like a sob story, because it kind of is, but it, like, you know, it all worked out, the, the lotus flower complex. At school, I would always have these days where it was just like kind of shade. Like, I wouldn't have great days at school, whether it was because I was getting ignored or didn't fit in or my own insecurities, whatever. And I started this thing. I must have been seven or eight. And it's crazy to think about this, but I would lay down in bed and I was like, okay, you know what? The day was not good, but let me pick three good things that happened today. Mm. And that's how it all started because I didn't want to feel sad. So before I went wow. to bed every single night, I would ask myself, like, what were the three things? And I got into the exercise of seeing what I enjoyed. And it would be very small, like, oh, my crush, he looked at me like, you know, in this specific <laughs> way, or I saw a butterfly or uh, whatever. It could have been something very small. And I think that just grew and that's when I started writing and that's when I started journaling and I would journal and read my journals. I have journals from when I was a teenager, like for 15, 16 years ago, right behind me. And I open them sometimes till this day and I'm like, damn, that's so dope that I've had this exercise. It's been a practice. And what I would do, I would read the journal and if I was being overly negative, I would correct it in the next entry and be like, okay, I know that I was complaining in the last entry, but things are, are not that bad. See, here's why. And I would kind of like convince myself of why things were better and what was good. And from that practice, I started learning what I liked. And from what I analyzed that I liked and the, the small things that I enjoyed, I started trying to build kind of goals around that so it's like okay I feel really excited when I'm speaking in French so what can I do to m make a global life I want to go to college in New York and study international business because that means I'm going to be able to speak languages travel and make money and it's just been this constant kind of like putting everything in my brain on paper analyzing it revising what I want to keep and what I don't want like editing a little bit of t removing the negativity out and sifting through what is great and what makes me happy and from there assembling it into a, a set of like tangible goals that I can achieve or, or at least work towards so that every single day I'm doing things and making choices that not only will benefit me in the future but that I enjoy doing in the day today. So it's been a practice like 
a long, long, long practice. Totally. Totally. I mean, you're, I, there, there aren't a whole lot of people, uh, like you, I have to say, it's inspiring to, 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 to see and hear. I mean, that sort of practice, I'm still, I'm still learning. Like I said, I mean, I started writing things down late. I mean, I'm in my mid twenties, I'm in my mid thirties now, you know, and it's like, wow, this self-reflection thing that you garnered is incredible. Y'all already know how I feel about paper and pen. It is sacred. This has been the secret for my lifestyle design, and I will never stop doing this. It's journaling, it's writing things down, it's tracking my progress. I've been writing, revising, planning, and executing for as long as I can remember. And if you would like to join Joe Club to learn how to actually do this yourself, you are more than welcome to. I relaunched the site, it looks super sexy and sleek, and I also rolled out a yearly membership where you get to save two months off and you get a one-on-one -on -one with me because I'm gonna get to know you if you're a part of Joe Club for a year. This is basically like our self-awareness circle, it's our self-development circle, we are global, and if you wanna talk about your personal development with people who share that same interest and people who can inspire you to grow and be bigger and better and finally achieve that that thing that you've always wanted, join Joe Club. We meet twice a month on Sundays. I'm sure that we will start meeting more when I finish my moderator training program. After the break, we talk about actually getting things done. Like how can we focus in this world of clutter and language learning tips? You're gonna wanna stay for the end. And there is this, you know, there is a current trope. And I mean, I do see this every once in a while. I'll coach kids uh, also. So like you have uh, every once in a while, I'll come back and like help out with my like right now I'm on my uh, break. Uh, so I'm here in the U.S., you know, and I'll go to the, my high school uh, where, you know, I've had a really good relationship with my coach and I'll come help out with camp one day. Something like this. And you'll have kids come around. Right. And it's really interesting watching young kids because sometimes you'll have a group of all guys like a guy's team will come by. Right. And they're, I don't know, six to eight, maybe five to eight, something like something like this. When you have those those groups come around, when the boy groups come around, one kid's picking his nose, the other one's hanging by the bar, you know, uh, uh, kids are out there like, don't go on the highway. Johnny, don't go on the highway. What are you doing? Get off. You know, you can't be going on the highway like this, right? You know, the guys are just, they're, they're nuts, just batshit crazy, right? And it's funny because then you'll get the, six, seven, eight-year-old girls will come. And they'll come, and they'll sit down. Hey, coach, what would you, what are we, you know, what would you like to do right now? I'm just like, I love, I love every single one of you guys because you're listening. It's not that the boys don't listen, you know. Uh, they do, you know, and they're all some well-behaved, you know. You got, everybody's different. You got like this. But in general terms, the girls are thinking. They're, 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 they're reflecting. They're, what's going on? What is this? Why is this happening? And all these things, you know? And so it, it's definitely interesting to see that sort of uh, juxtaposition between the sexes, you know, whether or not it's not. I mean, our whole world right now is is fighting with gender and, and all the stuff that's going on. But it, it, it does appear, whether it's learned or not, uh, it's clear that there's, there's these differences, you know? And so as men, trying to learn to like, all right, slow down, what do I think? What do I believe? Why? You know, and, and starting to, to, to have all that, that really critical thing is, is so beneficial to your life. Uh, because, and here's another, another throw out for your fans. or you Have you read Deep Work by Cal Newport? No. Do you know that book? I'm going to add this Not to my book list. Work. I, I th I've heard I of it. I think you probably do it already, but okay, you've heard of it. All right. Well, the only thing that I wanted to say about it is that his hypothesis is essentially that we're gonna have a split in society between the people who can basically focus for extended amounts of time and the people who can't. Majority of Earth, as we know right now, is distracted by phones, uh, fear, uh, whether that's, you know, if, you know, I don't know if you know a a Abram Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but it's really hard to worry about, you know, my creative thoughts when I don't have enough food. <laughs> so it's very obvious, you know, what's, what's going on in, in the world, but that split, if you've never studied or done anything deep work, and, and what deep work really essentially is, is no phone, no nothing for anything from an hour to three to four hours. I mean, imagine studying languages like this. Imagine doing your work like this. 
imagine. And so when people ask, once again, about time management and stuff like that, it's like, my deep work is blocked off, dog. Like, I know you want to go hang out, but, like, it's blocked off. You can't reach me. I'm alive. Don't worry. Just uh, you can't find me during these times. And so that allows for deep work. That allows for not this, this, this constant switching back and forth to 50 different things. And that's how, that's how I do it. Not your average Joe. Tip number four, be indistractable and practice deep work. In other words, put that phone on airplane mode, turn the phone off if you need to, remove yourself from the crowd and get things done. It's all about respecting yourself and your goals enough to give them undivided attention because they deserve it and so do you. Let's talk about this uh, to go back to your timeline because I want to make sure that we cover the life. Sure. From 19 years yes. old, you started playing professionally. When did you move abroad? 23. 23, 23 I moved to Denmark. To Denmark, and then you have been professionally playing football for how long? How old are you now? 37. I turned 37 two days ago. Wow, happy belated birthday! Thank you. Thank you Super very much. dope. Yes. Okay, this is yes. an, a blunt question, but I used to date a soccer player back in high school, and he was always saying no, no that way. like his his professional trajectory. He wasn't professional, but that was his goal. He was always saying he was mm. concerned because it was like such a small window of opportunity because your career is completely tied to your physical abilities. So it's like, what does that look like in? the lifespan of a pro football player so i'm out of the i'm i've been out for now like two three f maybe years already past the supposed time where your body's not supposed to work and so just for anyone who's under the age of 30 uh mainly these people that are under the age of 30 if you're listening to people that are above the age of 30 and they're like oh it's oh it's it's awful your life once you get to 30 everything's gonna break and you're the I'm here to tell you that is all bullshit. Literally, stop listening to these people. They're talking, they're telling you this based on their own experience. So if you want to, if you want to really know what it would feel like, here's the thing. I knew, like we said at 15, that I wanted to play. I'm one of the lucky ones for whatever reason, however this happened. So I don't drink. Have I drunk? Yes, of course. I, uh, you know, uh, balance everything in balance, everything in moderation, things like this. Do I have I gone out? Did I go out and party when I was in twenty three? Going out to the, of course, I did all all this stuff, of course. But it was it was balanced, right? So people ask me how I'm playing now and all this stuff. Well, you already saw my non negotiables with yoga. <laughs> you already you you know that my food. I'm probably not eating cake yet every day, you know, and eating at McDonald's. You, you know what I mean? And so. When I look at it, and it's like how, how my relationship with fitness and, and playing and all this stuff, it's personal. Do not look at someone else trying to tell you that it's all downhill once you get to 30 because they went downhill. They decided to make all those little decisions. And this is the thing. It's hard for people to, 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 to grasp this. And I don't care if it pisses you off. But if you are feeling, it's, it's two-pronged because I want it to piss you off and I also want it to wake you up. If you are feeling awful and you're 25 or 30 or 35, it's mainly because of the decisions that you have made, like we said, every day to not work out, to eat that crappy food, to not do yoga, and to not search for a solution for your issue. You do not have to accept the way the world the way it is if you have a little bit of back pain. You can do something about it, all right? And that doesn't matter of your age. I mean, we, we've talked about uh, in the other podcast, Steve Kaufman has learned a bajillion languages over the age of 60, right? supposedly your, your brain is supposed to decline. I thought you were supposed to go senile after 60 and be, he, how, is he, how is it possible that he's doing this? Well, he just ignored, I just ignored it. The same, same for this. You're gonna be, oh, well, you're, you're, you're almost done playing, right? You're 28 now, you got a couple of years. Well, I'm just gonna ignore what you say. And uh, I'm just gonna stay in my lane and work on my stuff. And it turns out 10 years later, you're wrong. And you probably, what it means is that you probably could have done more yourself. You're underachieving, and that's just the thing that I want. You know, like we said, we want everybody to be killing their goals. That was our goal here at the beginning of this podcast. The people that are telling that you can't do something, they themselves are probably underachieving for what they've done, no matter where you see them in the world. So, it's that's tough my love. It's really tough love, and I I feel very similar to you because it's like no one really wants to do the everyday difficult things. We all want to eat garbage food. 
right? Like I want to eat McDonald's every day, Tastes but good. do I? <laughs> no, I don't. It's like, I think about it and <laughs> it's tough because it's discipline. So where, where does your discipline come from? And what advice do you have for people out there who, who really, they're ready to move forward and accomplish their goals and like even for me some things i'm like damn i shouldn't have eaten that chocolate like do you have any <laughs> mental tricks that stops you from <laughs> hurting yourself in the long run with these everyday small decisions yes and no because for the 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 thing is, is that not a lot of tricks are needed if you have an, an intrinsic motivating burning desire to do something a whole lot of times it'll make it way easier for you and that goes back to what we were saying about clarifying what you want if you know for certain that by the end of the year you want to do a hundred pull-ups then you know eating McDonald's is not probably going to help you in that goal and so the the number one mental trick I would say is that you have to do the work of knowing what you want and I mean truly not like it would be nice to have a fast car it would be nice to have some money and it would be nice to have a big house. Those are vague. I can't do anything with that. Your subconscious mind can't do anything with that. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, I want you to put down on a piece of paper that by the end of this year, and it doesn't have to be big. It's big to you. It's you, like we said. And, you know, by the end of this year, I want to be able to have enough money to eat steak every day, to buy an iPhone, to, you know, to whatever it is. But clarify it tangibly, and then all you've got to do is track your results. I mean, I, I've, I've read such a, a phenomenal amount of books in the certain space about achieving what you want and doing, you know, trying to do all these things. And they all have the same commonality, which is first figure out what you want. That's very hard for some people. And it's not, I'm not knocking people who don't know what they want. By no means. I understand it's hard. And I'm, I, like I said, I feel like I'm lucky to, to know. But you have to do that work. You can't get something that you don't know what you want. You're always going to be disappointed in life. You know, why didn't it turn out well? You didn't know what you wanted. Number two, you've just got to, you've got to, a, take your steps every day towards that, that goal. And I know this sounds very easy and simple because you don't, but once you know what you want, you know, if I want to work, if I want to be the most fit ever, if I want to lose 25 pounds, then you know, today I need to work out. Tomorrow I need to go shop at Whole Foods and get really good food, you know, and stuff like this. You can break it down. Next, you got to measure. And that comes down to your journaling, which is why it's such an important thing that you can go back and look and say, wow, look at this mental space I was in right there. You have a track record of, I got to revise this, you know, boom, one day, next day. And you can watch that change across your, your journal, you know, of being in that dark space to thinking, I got to do a little better. This was good. This was good. Then the focus completely changes. So, you know, know what you want, take small steps, track your results, right? And then something that is, what I think controversial, and this I'm taking a lot of this as a the template or skeleton for this is a book called U Squared, which I think you would love if you've never heard of it. You would absolutely love this I, book. This is a reading list yes. episode also. Everyone <laughs> take notes. I'll yeah. link everything in the yeah. description box. <laughs> totally, totally. U Squared, it's a book by Price Pritchett, um, this guy, and, and essentially how to change your life tremendously, you know, that things don't have to just be necessarily incremental. You might do little incremental steps, but what you'll do is you'll wake up one day in this new world. And the last step is essentially that you have to kind of get your subconscious working with you. What that will essentially mean is that you need to visualize yourself, feel yourself into, into this new person that you are. Take some time to stop, turn off the phone, maybe play the nice music if that's what you want to do, but really sit there and feel who you would be if you were the person given a big speech at the UN, if that's what you want to do, right? Or whatever, riding that new car. The only, the only real power you have is your ability, your, your ability to delineate your thought. Your con what you concentrate on is your power. You don't have anything else, you as a conscious being. It's, it's not, oh, I'm strong or I'm fast or I'm anything. No, it's what you do with your thought power, where you put it. Where you put your thought, things will increase. That's the law of increase. And so if, you, uh, if you're focused only on this problem and how negative it is, that's going to continue to grow most likely, right? When you start to look at the problem and then say, all right, that's a problem. Where's the solution? And start looking for that solution. You will see the solution. It will come, right? That's really my mental tricks. <laughs> if you want to say it for keeping me disciplined, that's what's going to do it. Not your average Joe. Takeaway number five. Told y'all this episode was going to be fire. This guy's truly dropping the gems. Like, I, I, it's hard for me to keep track of all the gems, but number one, know what you want deeply, profoundly, intrinsically. Number two, start building habits to go towards those goals and stop doing things that actively hurt you in that journey. Number three, track your progress. 
whether that's journaling, vlogging, blogging, whatever you want to do to track where you started and where you will end up. Think about the fitness craze of like before and after photos. That's what you need to do, but with your goals in your life. And number four, harness your thought power. Learn how to focus your attention on that goal and to remind yourself of it as often as possible, even every two hours if you need to. Just remembering your compass, remembering your north is what's going to help you see the map. It's crazy because these things um, I've seen happen in my life. They're very true. It's so nice and refreshing that there are books with like, you know, the nomenclature to tell you what this is. And I was listening to a podcast about being indistractable. Uh, a man wrote a book. I forgot his name. This is where I need to be a little bit more focused here, <laughs> remembering the author's names. But anyways, the concept was really powerful. It was essentially what you just said, that we're living in an age with more distractions than ever. So we there will be two groups of people, those who know how to be focused and be indistractable and really take pride in their ability to focus on what they want to focus on as opposed to being like the squirrel that hears a noise or like, you know, the the skittish kind of person that doesn't even know where they want to focus. But I want to ask you, you do many things now. Okay, so it's in the beginning, it was easier while, while difficult because it, being a professional football player is one of the hardest things. It was difficult for the journey, but it was easy for you to see where you were headed. And I think in many ways, when you have one goal, you have tunnel vision. It's very clear. Same thing for me when I was trying to grow a YouTube channel to 1 million subscribers. It was very easy. I was posting and I was thinking about what videos to post and I was editing. My day to day did not change for six right. years. Right. But then what happens is you do accomplish those goals. So once you accomplish your goals and you actually see that these theories are not just theories, but you've seen it happen in your life, do you feel a confusion of like what's next? Like, did you ever in your professional career after you had achieved your goals of not only being professional, but then living in Europe and learning a few languages and adding more to those languages, do you ever feel lost about what's next or is it easy for you to see, okay, I accomplished this. It's time to do this now. To answer your question, never. I never, ever, ever feel lost. Uh, I am the type of guy that could probably live a thousand years and would constantly find new ways to try and achieve certain things. Uh, I have a propensity towards creativity and creating things. I love, I love creating different things. And so, you know, uh, I don't know however many years I have on this earth will be enough to do at least some of the things, but I'm going to need a few more lifetimes if we can make sure reincarnation is real. I don't know, you know. Uh, so, no, I don't. Once I, I'll give you a very tangible example. When I was 16, I read The Count of Monte Cristo, uh, which was a fascinating book for a 16-year-old. Funny enough, it was the abridged version, so it was only like 500 pages, and we got it assigned it for English class, and I read it, and I was like, this guy is, what a badass. He gets put in jail for the like, wrong, you know, and he, while he's in jail, he learns all this stuff from this old guy that's in there, teaches him languages and math and philosophy, and he, he tells him that this is where this treasure is when you get out, you know? And so this guy gets out of jail, and now he's armed with knowledge. He understands the world. He's got all these languages. And I was, at 16, I was like, okay, this, whatever, give me, the, give me this life. That's what got me you know, so gung ho about this, you know, I've been, I don't know how many countries I've been to, I need to count, but it's somewhere between 50, 60, 70, possibly even countries, right? And I said, then I would learn 10 languages. It's been 20 years, I'm at nine, right? Still, obviously, bolstering those languages con continually, but I think I undersold myself, right? Uh, and so once I, I, I realized that, it's like, well, cool, what else, you know, can I achieve? It's, you don't, really understand and i think you, you said something similar to this earlier but you don't really understand what you can do from the consciousness level that you're at right now so if you are not a person that works out and your goal is i just want to get fit you know let me lose some weight or you know get get to here you don't know that once you're fit you're going to go i want to run a marathon you know and then you don't know that once you run in your first marathon you're thinking i want to win a marathon you don't realize that because you can't think like that. The person who's whatever, a couch potato or is, you know, just doing whatever. You can't have that thought until you basically upgrade, right? And so 
I don't see any issues right now for the goals that I have because as my consciousness expands, as I have more confidence in myself and believe and, you know, become this magnet for kind of positivity and pushing for myself and other people join your, your journey. You know, people come in, they, they write me, hey, I want to be part of your team and do this stuff. All of a sudden now you've got, you know, uh, something that you didn't have, you know. And so new goals become really, really easy to, to, to come up with. And as long as they, they stay aligned with your, your main goal, I don't have any issues at all. Um, so for me, that's not a problem. <laughs> not your average Joe takeaway number six. This is such a dope concept. You know, when you're playing a video game and you can only see a little piece of the map until you beat the level and then you get to see the bigger picture, the same thing applies with your goals and everything that you're able to imagine. You don't know what you're capable of until you start achieving. So I guess the takeaway here is just, just keep moving forward because the more you move forward, the more of the map you'll see and the bigger goals you will be able to set for yourself and achieve. It doesn't end, y'all. That's the point. I think there are short-term goals and long-term goals, or I guess there's a deep, profound compass. Like, there's, there's a compass inside, I think, of all of us. And it took me a while to understand that because I think our society kind of trains us to believe that we need to hit goals. And I know we've spent a lot of time talking about goals, but what I've learned is that it's not necessarily about achieving goals, but more about following that north that true north inside of us right in the compass so when i didn't understand that my purpose quote unquote purpose or like my sacred work was much bigger than these smaller goals even though the goal seemed massive like the goal of hitting a million subscribers like one million people following me or hitting uh getting the audition for a netflix show where thousands and thousands of people were interviewed and i got the job like these are huge goals and so when i was thinking with like my society goggles on i thought that this was like the biggest thing i could have ever accomplished but then and and that makes you sad that makes you kind of sad because you're like damn i accomplished it now what but then when i realized like let me write down the deeper roots of why these were goals to begin with. And it's like, I want to build a global group of people. I want to, I want to kind of learn as much as I possibly can and connect to as many people as possible. And these things made sense for that true North, but that true North is going to continue whether the goals are here or not. So I think that was a little bit of like a comforting exercise for me to even do and to realize like, yeah, goals will come and go, but the true north will stay and and that's when it hit me i don't think i'm ever changing it hit me last year i'm like damn i'm gonna be just like steve kaufman if i live that long yeah, inshallah so you true. know like i don't yeah. think i'm gonna stop learning languages because i love it because the minute i can speak to someone and see the light in their eyes it lights up my eyes and my heart and i'm like damn this is a feeling that i want for the rest of my life same thing with being fit. Like, I want to have a body that carries me around as long as possible. I'm going to be fit. I'm going to work out. I'm going to keep my relationships growing because I love community. So, I don't know. I think when I zoomed out, the goals actually seemed so granular and silly because we, we are, like, killing ourselves if we don't achieve these goals. Or when we do achieve the goals, we're like, damn, what's next? And then I'm like, that's so small in the grand scheme of things. That's so true. And the, the thing that you said with the North Star actually reminds me on our podcast, we had a, a woman named Borna Kotromanic. She's a Croatian woman who was married to, at the time, which you could more or less kind of say, everyone's aware of what a, like a Russian oligarch is, you know, in the fall of the Soviet Union, and these guys that, you know, got this money from doing this. She was married to, uh, to one, essentially a Croatian oligarch, let's just say, in that sense, and uh, at the fall of Yugoslavia. She's one of the most amazing women I've ever spoken to because her understanding of that North Star is so ruthless and and so impossible to impede her from that, that just talking to her for the short period of time uh, that we did. And we actually, I was really happy because we had her come over to our studio in Zagreb. And so it was really cool to actually, you know, be physically there with her it was unbelievable. And she talks about that. You know, this is a woman who the media tried to, she got divorced from this guy in the divorce settlement. She was left with roughly $50 million. And so that's life-changing money right there, 
you know, and, and just talking to her about creating her own world and like having to step off and, and, and believing in what you, what you are and trying to paint your own identity and stuff like that. It just was fascinating. But it's that those people with that sort of drive, and I think everyone has this drive in it because like if you don't really know what you want, you have a little bit of an inclination. Just move towards that. Just move a little bit towards that thing that's calling you and the next step will reveal itself and the next and then the next and the next. And before you know it, you're doing more of the thing that you wanted to do, even though at the beginning you couldn't define it. And that's just the thing. It's like we want to just have it i want to be this and it's here well maybe you don't have that maybe you just know something is pulling me towards this you just have to honor that here's a little journaling exercise what is your true north think about that common thread of your character from childhood all the way until now what has been your driving force what has really lit your soul on fire and consider anything that honors it your path so when you learn languages some of my favorite videos that I found of <laughs> are of you in the middle of Times Square just talking to random people that must fill you up with so much energy and even though you said to me earlier that you're an introvert so can you talk a little bit about that like when did that idea start to just go out into the, into the streets of New York City and surprise people <laughs> also let's not forget to say this for anybody listening you're a black man so this is like a double <laughs> yeah. shock not only are you speaking all these languages but it's definitely not common to see people of color i get that all the time like wow you're the first per i'm like yeah but we exist yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean to answer that question even just based off what you said like we we spoke about I think on 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 my podcast black people speaking russian speaking eastern european languages speaking croatian and serbian and stuff like that is very rare because there's just not a lot of not a lot of africans not a lot of african americans not black people in in those countries and so it's shocking to some of them to just hear people you know taking an interest in their culture to the point of wanting to learn the language enough to to be able to converse but given like i said i have an ability to float in the ex in, as an extrovert and to speak uh, i'm not afraid to be in front of the camera and do all that stuff but my default nature and i spend a lot of time alone as much as i possibly can because that feels normal to me i don't have any issues i'm also an only child that probably plays into it so no brothers or sisters you know yeah the idea to just go out in the street and, and speak was one of i knew that we wanted to do something with languages on the the soccer channel every once in a while i would do intros and outros in other languages and people would just be like did he just speak german like what was what's going on i had no idea this guy spoke german why does he speak german you know and and, and stuff like that and so we knew we wanted to do something and the best thing for me was to not get this just dry me with the camera just kind of talking and reciting stuff or like this it was to like show what you can do once you learn the language it's like people will talk to you not only you get free things which is actually hilarious because just by knowing a few words in a language i mean the amount of things that people will just give you you're like family you're like family to these people it's, it's insane true. I just got right? like every single course covered in a Greek restaurant in Astoria, Queens. The guy brought out the wine, unlimited drinks, uh, you know, sweets and app. And I'm like, damn. And then it's like they yeah. want to take pictures and hug. And I'm like, yeah, let's be yeah. family. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the way it is. And I think, uh, you know, I just did a documentary for some university students trying to figure out why America isn't a multilingual nation. Right. Uh, you know, uh, most people don't see an interest in that. And so my whole thing, the questions they were asking me is like, why you do that? I'm like, have you seen what happens when you just say one word to a person who is, you know, in this place? They don't expect it. They, bl they lose their minds. It's, it's, it's as if you just like gave them gold. And so uh, for me, just this journey of being able to go out in Times Square, we just filmed another one, by the way, uh, and so that'll be out here. And I've become kind of known in Little Italy. So we went to Little Italy the first time, spoke Italian, asking all the people out there about their experience, stuff like this, and that video blew up. So we just went back to do it, and people know me on the street in Little Italy. It's like the small, it's not very big. I mean, it's it's a decent size, few blocks, but like it just blows my mind. Like, like hey, there's the, it's him, you know, and they're speaking to me in Italian. They're stopping me as I walk by, speaking to me in Italian, like I'm just like at home in this little part, and that's just, it's nuts. So, yeah, that's what you can find there on that, it's just me talking to random people and just having these conversations, asking people about their lives, and it's just a lot of fun, you know? 
what like I think the the goal of all of the things that you do, it seems not to like over generalize, but it's you've always been very curious and language gives you the power to get more answered. Totally. I'm ultraly curious and that's actually I mean the tagline for one of our podcasts is Will John talks to people about stuff he knows absolutely nothing about. And that's the way I want it. I want to be the dumb guy having smart people come on so I can just learn from you about about everything. And language does allow you to do that because I can watch, I watch series in other languages now. I read books in other languages. My Chrome on my computer is set to Swedish. I don't even know how that happened, but that's just what it is. And I'm not changing it. So now I just have to learn certain other words that I don't know. I got, I know I'm in Swedish. So I am fantastically curious uh, about the world and other people and other people's experiences and being able to communicate with people about that is insane because you can learn so much. People that think they aren't wealths of knowledge, you know, for me are just full. You're full of knowledge. Your experiences, I've never lived a day like you. Tell me what that's like. Tell me how you do that. I, I come out better on the end, you know, having I love had that, that conversation. Too. So that's like yeah. my my jam. Everyone, anyone in any language that I can achieve, like we're going to have a conversation because there's something that I can gain and you can gain and we could just both gain from this exchange. Uh, and then on the nitty gritty side, yes, habit stacking. So no Netflix in English. I also use that trick. Sometimes I cheat a little bit and I'm like, you know, it's like the chocolate yeah. example, except visually. <laughs> but I used to have a yeah. rule like if I'm binging anything, it has to be in a different language. You have your job in Croatian. So that keeps you sharp and your teammates are multilingual or from different parts of the world. Do you have any other hacks yeah. for language learning? Oh, God, do I have hacks for language learning? Yes, of course, after failing. And this is a lot that we talk about on the channel, so if anybody's interested, they can definitely check it out. If I had to break down just a few things to make sure that your first few days or the first language that you're trying to learn isn't a disaster, number one, do not do what they do to you in school. No focusing on grammar. Like, <laughs> don't do that to yourself, the charts and all this stuff. Number two, this new thing that's in the world, and we kind of spoke about it, but the gamification of language learning. These apps, they're all good for a little bit of exposure. But guys, this is not your main <laughs> way to learn the language. If you think it's nice, I'll do 10 minutes of, of this little thing on my phone every day. We all and know then, what it is, by the way. You know, and, <laughs> we all like avoid yeah, saying the know, name. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, it's very popular. <laughs> There's a few. I won't name them. You guys all know what we're talking about. That's not going to do it, all right? That ha Having said that, those are the things that you need to avoid. Don't just pretend like you're learning by just playing this little game and it gives you points, all right? Number two, stay away from grammar. Number three, what should you focus on? Well, you should be focusing on trying to expose yourself to the language in ways that you can understand. And so one of the methods that's amazing, and Dr. Stephen Krashen, uh, you know, I've spoken to you know, on, on a number of occasions, is pretty much the guy that came up with this. It's the natural method, the natural approach, I have my own other methods that I won't go into, but at least this specifically, this is one of the easiest ways. And to explain it as simple as possible, when you learned your mother tongue, your parents did not sit there and start reading Shakespeare to you at two years old. What they did is they said, this is a pen, okay? Pen. And they repeated that to you. And that was basically the extent of your vocab for a whole conversation. Pen. Black pen. Right? And you... We're like, what is it? Eventually, you understood that's a black pen. You didn't translate that because you didn't have anything else to translate it from, right? And so you as an adult, as someone who's listening to this, you already speak English, whether it's your first or second language. Well, we don't want you to translate the word into your mother tongue. I don't want you to say pen. I want you to just know that this is a pen. And so when you're trying to learn a language, your goal is to get the language from your conscious mind to your subconscious mind, just like when you learn to ride a bike or drive a car, you know, or type, you can't, you don't type like this. You know where the, you know where they are now and now it's in your subconscious and you just do it. And so that's your entire goal. And so the very first thing you need to do is just to find something that you can understand a very simple sentence, very simple series, you know, where you can understand something 70% and up and you need to listen to that and take in a whole bunch, you know, Pimsleur is really great. I know you have a good relationship with them. Their, their stuff is really great because it gives you a good basis by the end of 30 minutes, you can understand a, a conversation. That's the very first thing that I think most people need to focus on. There's other stuff down down the ways, but if we can get you started 
there, I think you you have a good a good basis, and then you can start speaking and looking for phrases that you can you know speak on and say and stuff like that. So. That's how I would start. So crazy. I'm so upset with myself because I thought I was the only one who would talk about the natural method. I literally have never read uh-huh. Dr. Krashen's natural method, but I'm like, that's how I've been learning uh, all of my languages. And it's always been in a context where it's been fun. I never liked school very much. Definitely not language classes. Mm. And whenever I have a Same. tutor, I kind of lead the session myself because I have to Sorry. drill them on questions. I don't like being told what to do. Like that's a personality <laughs> flaw, but it works yeah. out yeah. in language yeah. uh, because I get to like build relationships. Just the other day I took, I'm taking German. I'm taking German classes and the tutor was like, wow, this is such a fun lesson. I'm like, yeah, girl, what? You want to be boring? <laughs> like we're going to have a fun yeah, time. <laughs> Not your average Joe takeaway number six. When it comes to language learning, listen to the man who speaks nine languages. Try to make it as natural in your life as possible. And most of all, make it fun. Fall in love, make it an emotional connection because that's what's gonna keep you studying. I'm working on a course right now on how to learn languages the way that I've done it in this natural method. Like, damn it, y'all, I didn't even know this was already a coin term. I'm gonna call it the JoJo natural method. But if you'd like to know more and hear about it first, sign up for my newsletter. It is also in the show notes. So after all of this, I would love to get your not average Joe takeaway that someone can take today and implement into their lives. What would you say is one of the top things that someone can do to be a not average Joe? Well, I mean, we started out with with what we started out and I will second that, maybe just add on a little If you're looking to be non-average, number one, you need to stop listening to anyone that's average trying to tell you what to do about your life. That would be very good. So if you have people around you that are trying, if you have a dream of doing something and you're looking and listening to the average people around you, stop that because they're only going to be able to think, like we said, from their own little consciousness level. You're going to need to find mentors, find people who are doing what you're doing. All that stuff, regardless of how far ahead they are or where or how distant it is, it seems to you, you need to find those people. The second, please follow your North Star. <laughs> I know it's really easy to just think, have those thoughts, and everybody's had them. It would be nice to travel to Costa Rica. I know I can't. I got, I got this job. I got this thing. And You had that thought. You had that thought for a reason. Explore that. Don't kill the kid in you. Do not, right? If you can manage to, to not kill the kid in you that's pushing for all this stuff, you can end up just playing all the time, which is kind of how I feel like. I'm just all the time, I'm just in this world of play, right? You know, and I'm constantly trying to create more and more fun for myself while having that good, that good life. And, uh, you know, I've done a decent job of that. And the next is this persistence, this persistence in this every day, owning who you are and what you're trying to do. Own your words, own your actions, own your mistakes, you know? And it doesn't mean groveling, I'm so sorry that I did. No, you, you did it, great. I, this is what I did, now I'm moving on to try and be a better person to try and, and, and do what I, what I want to do. And so all of those things, you know, and I mean, I just got done talking to another polyglot who speaks like 20 someone, Wouter Kordewener, if you've ever heard that name. Uh, Dutch guy, speaks like 29 languages. He's a pretty, pretty interesting dude. Uh, and we just kept coming back to the thing, like what's driving your success? And it was in Italian, non molare. It was, don't give up. You cannot, you cannot give up. You can't look or listen to anyone or anything that is trying to distract you from your goal. You cannot give up. Persist, 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 and believe in yourself and find ways to make it fun. That's it, you know? That's it. Mic drop. And where can we find you on your many platforms and many uh, podcasts? Oh, Oh my God! You can find me anywhere, everywhere on the internet, and every platform. No, no, we are we are all over the place, to be perfectly honest. But please, if you enjoyed this podcast, please come save me from having to talk about soccer all the time, guys. Please, the Way of Will John podcast <laughs> uh, is on Apple, on Spotify, and of course, if you want to watch, we always do them in video as well. Um, we'll give you the links to that. But I would love to get more and more people interested in having discussions like this and doing things like this so I can continue to broaden my my world because we just started doing this just a few months ago and it's going really well and so I would love if people would check that out but Golaremi Languages or just type in Will John into YouTube and you'll find the soccer stuff if that's what you're up to and uh, that's me 
That is it for today. Thank you so much to Will John, who was an outstanding guest. I hope you follow him on his socials. And don't forget to listen to the conversation that we had on his podcast. I am so excited about how these conversations have uh, grown me and hopefully have grown you too. If you like it, don't forget to rate the show five stars and share it with a friend who might connect to some of these tips. My goal is to give you guys the tools that I've used and to get new tools from the guests because the goal is to make us all a little less average. Hello, that's the show's name. All of these things that I'm building are finally coming to life. Like I have a really dope new website called joefranco.world where I'm going to start a newsletter specifically for like Joe Franco news. There's of course my journaling club, joeclub.world. I have three Instagram accounts at joe underscore Franco, at not your average Joe pod for all bonus clips on the podcast and at joe club underscore, which is where you find really dope journaling inspiration. You can even go on that Instagram account and just get all of these interesting questions to ask your friends and family because that's what that page is all about. Thank you so much for tuning in in a world where we're pulled in a million directions i truly appreciate your attention have an above average week because you deserve it and i'll see you soon hey yo come listen to my girl man what you doing shit <laughs>